Welcome to Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. This is a comic book show here on YouTube where we take a comic book from my past and then I share with two people who have no context for it. Of course, over the many years of the show, you guys have developed some context for some of these books. Nope. Uh, in one ear or out the maybe other. Maybe not you, but <laughs> most of you have Let's also... Say, uh, increasing context. True enough. Starting from zero, but now with more. Yes, but both of you can't <laughs> argue that you would remember that one of my favorite eras of Spider-Man is... The J. Michael Straczynski run. That's right. Creator Babylon that is true. 5 wrote Spider-Man for a time. And that time was around the time when I was sitting in, like, my room and going, like, comic books are bullshit. <laughs> and they break your heart and they will only betray you. Uh -huh. Damn it. Then this came along. And I was like, oh, shit. This came for me. <laughs> and so many other people have brought people back into comics. For some context... How often did you have to write into Babylon 5 to get a comic book out of this? What? I didn't re even watch Babylon 5. Oh. I have seen nary a commercial for Babylon... I mean, I remember oh. Babylon... Nope. Spider-Man, this volume is called Coming Home. Doesn't matter. It's just Amazing Spider-Man number 30 to 35. But that's volume 2. And they kept the legacy numbering, so don't bother. It... So it's got two numbers? Yeah, it's got two numbers. Okay. And uh, and then once Amazing Spider-Man hit number 500, they just dropped Volume 2's legacy and then just kept going forward. Like, oh, to mm -hmm. hell with it. I was like, okay, the clone's dead. What's next? And it was like, Howard Mackey just wouldn't stop writing Spider-Man comics. And I'm like, I have to stop. <laughs> then they were like, don't worry, John Burns. And I'm like, ooh, John Byrne, I love his Fantastic Four. And he's going to redo Spider-Man's origin. Oh, you lost me again. <laughs> and then See, uh, after that, they were like, okay, never mind. That was like an imaginary tale or whatever. <laughs> and so they threw that out and then they were like, okay, I know what's the problem. Mary Jane. Mary Jane's the problem. Get her so the fuck out Mary of here. Mary Jane dies in a plane crash. And then it what? turns out that people got really mad, like Clone Saga mad uh -huh. about yeah. that. So she didn't really die. She was kidnapped and made to look like she died on that plane. But actually, everyone on that plane died except for Mary Jane, and she was kidnapped by some stalker, and later on, Spider-Man will eventually rescue her. But not before we try and test the waters a little bit. Maybe she did mm -hmm. die, maybe she didn't. We do establish she was absolutely kidnapped. Mm -hmm. But maybe she'll die during that period, because the, everybody kept telling Peter in his life to move on, to move on and get yep. over it. And like, they're introducing new people, like Gwen Stacy's cousin. Oh and you're like, God. get away, <laughs> what are you doing? Your name's Gwen Stacy, I'm not going out with <laughs> so you. No, it was, it was, it was, it was uh, I don't remember what the fuck her name was, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Point is Jill, it was Jill Stacy. Who cares? The point is, they, they just tried to like, they, they just kept digging themselves. We're, yeah. uh, we're in this six feet hole. What are we Nothing gonna do? we try worse. We'll dig our way out. <laughs> so they got stuck in that hole and then they just kept making it worse. And then- Well, if we can't go down any further, we'll just go around. We'll go through. We'll yeah. Go through the planet. The entire planet. earth. Cool. Eventually we gotta come oh, out the other side, Oh, I can't do right? it, but you can do it. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll end up in Australia, but at least it'll work out. Or China. Or China. Either way. No, we just end up in the Pacific the somewhere. I think it's in the Indian Ocean. I don't really know. Oh, the other side of the planet yeah. from here? Grab a globe and we'll find out. We do have one in the studio, actually. Oh, yeah. We're not going to grab that, though. But uh, anyway, That's too much work. They, they, the point being, you couldn't get much lower when they brought in Babylon 5 creator J. Michael Trzynski. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, what do you have? Yeah, what do you got? And, what oh, are you going to do? So what they oh, no. Oh, what are no. you going to do now? And what they did was Spider-Man rescued Mary Jane. Remember, Aunt May died in Amazing Spider-Man 400 during the Clone Saga? Mm -hmm. They tried to imply that the baby that Mary Jane lost, also during the Clone Saga, was kidnapped. And so Spider-Man goes this whole arc where he like tears through the city to get to her. And what he finds instead of the baby is that the Aunt May who died was an actress who was genetically modified to look like Aunt May, right. who actually <laughs> died in a yeah. performance of a lifetime. And so Aunt May was brought back to life. So it's like, oh, instead of reestablishing this like forward momentum status quo where it's like, okay, we really, really got away from what Spider-Man was, but you know what? Now we're gonna be like Spider-Man and Mary Jane are together and they have a baby and we're gonna see what stories that is. No, instead we're going to have the- We're gonna turn back the we're clock. We're gonna turn back the clock. Aunt I'm gonna May, undo all the mistakes of my own life. Yeah, so- <laughs> Through Spider-Man. I'm gonna undo that marriage and I'm gonna bring and back my the geriatric kid. <laughs> yeah, and that kid who's just that kid who bleeding me dry. <laughs> no, it, it, so what they did if was- only life could be like this. So what they did was they brought back Aunt May yeah. and the strain of that experience 
and the kidnapping caused a rift in their marriage. So instead of them killing Mary Jane, they just had them get legally separated. Oh. So Mary Jane went to the coast, she went to California to try and push her modeling acting career, which she occasionally would have throughout the Spider-Man story. Sure. So in the context that they left Straczynski and they were like, uh, Mary Jane is living in California and they're not divorced because that would make him look really old. And uh, there's no baby, but there is a geriatric old woman who lives and needs his support in the city. Is he dating people? Uh, no, but she kind of is. Because he's still is. married. Yeah. They're, well, they're implying like maybe they should start dating. Uh, certainly, women are flirting with him, mm -hmm. and he's reluctantly open, and she is like very interested in other people. And you're like, oh no, oh that's how they'll get them divorced. Yeah, they'll we'll make her into a harlot. Yeah, like, exactly. No. So when Straczynski comes on board, it is a nightmare. A, a nightmare that Sal does not want to right. endure. It's the situation where you're like, well, there's no point. Yeah, I'm not getting anywhere near. You can't near. fix there's, it. There's, it's, it's a no-win scenario. Yeah. This isn't Spider-Man. Thankfully, Straczynski this does not perfect. believe in no-win scenarios. <laughs> because he created Babylon 5, which is a huge rip-off of Star Trek. Depending you know, on who you ask. Unless you want to compare it to Deep Space Nine, which right. is uh, Deep Space Nine is the rip-off. Right. Allegedly. Allegedly. So uh, this run mostly includes art by John Romita Jr., who is at the top of his game right now. Uh, some folk have a real problem with his style. I kind of dig it. I don't more now, but mm -hmm. I did back then. Okay. So with okay. time, you're like, nah, I get oh, why no, some people like Oh no, it's more like when it. he got older, the art got more loose, uh, and I was like, oh no. But like this kind of still strikes a soft spot for me. Okay. Yeah, look at that spider butt. It's very well defined. That's uh, that's actually J. Scott Campbell, creator of a co-creator of Gen 13. Ah. They brought in J. Scott Campbell to do all the covers for Amazing Spider-Man's run up until about Amazing 500. What's interesting about that is there was a big rumor around this time that uh, they were going to bring in superstar Hollywood director Kevin Smith and J. Scott Campbell and have them take over Amazing Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. well, we already saw what happened with Daredevil. Well, and not only could Daredevil not finish one two-part Daredevil miniseries, but also he couldn't even start doing the Amazing Spider-Man run, and they were like, well, we'll just give it to the Babylon 5 guy. <laughs> and I guess since they had Campbell on retainer, they're like, do the covers. And he does really great covers, and he's like, constantly reminded of how great these covers are even like 10 years later. Mm. So anyway, Spider-Man is establishing where he is and Straczynski, by the way, so he, he inherits a shit show. What's he gonna do? Now Straczynski also doesn't want to read all these comics, so there are gonna be a couple of inconsistencies <laughs> with the continuity. Okay. Uh, and editorial's gonna have to pick up some of the slack where they fix it in like trades. Uh. But when you're reading it, you're like, this is great. <sighs> you don't remember this, but I'm just gonna <laughs> ignore it because I really like what's happening. Yep. It's one of those things where it's like quality over continuity. Mm -hmm. So Spider-Man is getting dressed. He's living in a one-bedroom apartment. He's still dealing with the, with, the, with the fallout of his marriage starting to be dissolved. Yeah. And he has a, a voicemail on his phone from Aunt May. And this is one of the few times outside of like when DiMatteis would write Aunt May where Aunt May has a fucking character. Mm. Like Aunt May is a person. She's not just an old lady. That is a plot device for right. Peter to that not gets, like, go on a date. Or, or she's old or has to get and dying. Somehow. Right. Yeah. It's literally just she is a person. And that's JMS is like he 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 was like when he was interviewing for the job, they were like, We want to give you Spider Man. He goes, Okay, Spider Man, right? It's a him, his wife, and his aunt. Are there any other characters? They're like, uh many. He's like, oh, well, I'm gonna focus on those. And that's all he focuses on. For the rest of the run, occasionally he will bring in like Joe Robbie Robertson, but like only for a panel or two. Uh -huh. He will get him away from the Daily Bugle in a big, bad, but still organic and fun way. But he's like, I'd only care about Aunt May and Mary Jane and their relationship with Peter, and that's who I'm going to focus on. Uh -huh. Is this Aunt May more interesting than the Ultimate Spider-Man? No, Aunt May? they're equally interesting and very different from each other. Okay, I love in different ways. Yes. Got it. And they were, they were running concurrently, by the way. Mm. So we're gonna have huge polar shifts in character for Aunt May in this that run alongside some changes for Aunt May in the Ultimate Universe. And it's like equally satisfying because they're both well executed. So you're like, okay, cool. So you're Pete, getting your Aunt May fix all over the exactly. place. Exactly. So Pete, Which no one asked for. <laughs> well, I mean, no one asked for it, but we are all happy to get it because yeah. it worked out great. So Pete's listening to a voicemail from Aunt May who's basically like, I know that you're like unhappy and you're kind of prone to that. 
you know, Mary Jane's on the other side of the country, but like I have hope and I believe in this situation. And I just wanted to call and say like, bad times come in our lives, but they will pass and good times will outweigh them. And you know, just kind of establishing who she is and what she means to Peter mm -hmm. as Peter's putting on his costume and swinging over the city. So <laughs> Pete is in an unhappy place. Uh -huh. His wife doesn't want anything to do with him and she's in a totally different environment surrounded by like cute men who are like able to keep dates with her and so That's, forth. So he's just like, right. And he's also, oh, you mean they're not superheroes? Yeah, right. and he's living in this like, I don't want to be here. I should be in my home with my wife, but I'm not. I'm in this like drab apartment. So he's like, I need something to hit. Uh -huh. And so he's been swinging around the city. He can't find anybody. And he basically finds a high rise that is targeted for demolition. And so he just so he punches. He it. just blasts the shit oh, out of it. Oh, that's awesome. He just tears into it and then realizes like, oh my God, I've been, I've been tearing this building apart all night. Uh -huh. It's the morning. This place is gonna come down. <laughs> so he swings away, and then the construction foreman is like, "All right, guys, we got six hours until this thing crew. Everything comes down. Well, that's lunch." <laughs> because JMS <laughs> is a complete pioneer of the move the car George movement. <laughs> it's it's the th the four main characters of an amazing Spider-Man JMS series are Peter, Mary Jane, Aunt May, and George. And George is an avatar for every who gives a shit side character who's just there for JMS to get out his hilarity fix. Her, 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 the foreman is just, we get a full page dedication to a gag where Peter destroyed the building for them so now they don't have anything to do all day. Fart. He's just kind of like wandering around and he winds up like kind of like auto walking to his old neighborhood mm -hmm. and his old school where he used to go to school, PS 108. Oh, like high school, not, uh, not New York college. University. No, no, it's uh, Empire State Empire University. State. Sorry. Yeah, we've seen him. He's, he's been a graduate student. He's worked for Empire State. But like here we are at his old high school and he's walking by and there's this nerd. And this nerd's wearing glass. He's got Fucking his books. Nerd. He's got all his papers. And these kids are pushing him and knocking things oh. over and giving him a hard time. And then Pete just like walks up to them and he's like, I would leave him alone. Right. JMS's Kinda Peter Parker cool. is an adult. Yeah. He is a little more sure of himself, a little more cocky mm -hmm. and a little bit more abrasive. Mm -hmm. He's in a dark place. So I'm going to, I'm going to grant him a couple of dark moments. Yeah. Him threatening teenagers in an imposing manner. Well, the, it reminds him of his old times. It reminds yeah. him of his old times. Yeah. So he helps this kid. He picks him up and the kid's like, Thanks, they're only gonna beat on me now. There's a gym teacher who comes by and he's like, hey, I'm Kyle Jacoby. I have no role in this book, <laughs> but I have a name and I'm going to be in the first issue and then you'll never see me again. No well, way. at least it's a name. It is a name. I'm not like, I'm the gym teacher and then we never hear from so him I again. It's not a guy gym. who's just like, hey, good job with what you just did. No, <sighs> he is basically like, nice job, but like kind of a waste of your time. Right. Because like school sucks. This school in particular really sucks. The kids are completely stupid and don't care and they're mm. unfocused. They're all in their, their phones <laughs> and they're unreachable. Don't waste your time. You know, like all you need to do is move on. And he's like, you know, the, the, the reality is that kid there who's getting his ass kicked, like he's getting a college education because like that's, he's gonna have to either like learn to fight back or he's gonna become a cog in the grand machine. Evolve or die, leave. And Pete's like, wow, what a dickhead. Yeah. So, so Pete's swinging around and he stops a carjacking. And then when he does, there's this dude, this old dude who's clinging to a wall next to him and he goes, well, that was fun watching you, Peter. What? And Spider-Man's like, whoa! And you as the reader are like, wait, hold, stop. There's an old man who has Spider-Man powers who knows who Peter Parker is. So then he's like, this guy's got my powers. W what is this? And this character who is going to be revealed as Ezekiel goes, yeah, I know what you're thinking. What, who's this old dude? Why does right. he have my powers? Yeah. Am I your enemy? I called you by your civilian name, so maybe I am, but I'm not attacking you. And then he's like, and then he gives chase. Like he basically is like taunting him, like with with context. Uh -huh. Come and catch me. Come and catch me. Who am I? Like, and so he's like, you almost got me. <laughs> you never catch me, Ezekiel. <laughs> so he's bouncing across the city, and Spider-Man's chasing after him, and he's basically saying like, you don't know anything about your origins, and I'm living proof of that. Oh no. Oh yes. No, 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 no. Is yeah. this? Is this? Yeah. Where... This is it. This is it. This is. This is what. But. Handled, How could you like this? I like it because it's handled way better than when Straczynski is allowed to do like an event called The Other, where he's like, oh no, I've, I've picked a side. So 
but maybe you'll like it as it's as it as it's. All right. I like our immediate indignation at this. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Wait so, a minute. No. No. So Ezekiel goes, let me like, let me ask you a question. How'd you get your powers? And he goes, I got bitten by a radioactive spider. And he goes, okay, sure. Because the real question but, is yeah, like, no, but that like, doesn't but... make any sense. Like, had you ever like? He goes, did you ever perform an autopsy on the spider? He's like, no, it was smashed. I didn't get to do anything with it. <laughs> and he's like, pulp. yeah, and he goes, okay, because like, how do you know that the spider didn't have the power to give you those abilities before it was irradiated? And he's like, because like, that doesn't make any sense. Because like, you're spiders saying it's a don't do that, that it was irradiated? Yes, that's what Ezekiel's suggesting. Right. Because that's not how radiation works. Right! That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, but that's also not how we're spiders work. Scientists. Yeah. Spiders don't just bite people and you get their powers no. willy nilly. Right. Well, that's why Peter assumed that the radiation did that. But Ezekiel's right. saying there's something else. There's something else. There's something else. And he goes, which came first? Was it the radiation or the power? And that kind of blows Peter's mind. And then he goes, well, you think about that for tonight. Lesson over. See you later. And he swings away. Or he disappears because he doesn't uh -huh. have web shooters. Okay. He looks like he just falls off the building. Well, he tumbles off so and long. then disappears. Yeah. <laughs> he pulls a Peter Parker right off this building. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the pier, there's this young dude who is bribing a harbor master, I should say, hmm. to allow this ship to stay in port. Uh, his name is Dex. Just Dex. He doesn't get a full name. Okay. And Dex is harboring this vampire in the bows of a ship. Is it Morbius? He looks like Morbius. So you're like, oh, maybe it is. But he's is like, it more Lun? It's more Lun. It's the debut. No. The debut. Wait a minute. I thought you liked this book. This is where it all starts, and it's pretty dope. It's, <laughs> strap in. So more Lun <laughs> is in the bows of the ship. Uh -huh. we've, we've never seen more Lun before. Right. He looks a little more like Morbius. Right. And he is just about done draining the energy, thereby murdering this superhero from Germany. Okay. A legit superhero? Wow. Well, JMS invents him for the story. I'm right, very like, hesitant to call him It's, it's yes. a superhero. It's not like just a person who no, it is was a, in Germany. It is, a super, it is a German superhero that JMS creates to establish that Morlan is an energy vampire what? that absorbs people's life energy and at the, at the expense of their life. What yeah. terribly racist name does he give the superhero? We don't even really get a name. Hmm. He just says, whoever heard of a German superhero anyway. <laughs> All right. And he says, like, now I'm here, and I'm, like, I'm going to be at full strength soon, and then I will search for his replacement, that being Spider-Man. Pete's getting served wheat cakes by Aunt May, Yay. or he's mulling over, and he's like, oh, I'm sorry, I went away, didn't I? And she's like, yeah, you do that. Yeah. She goes, anyway. You're very self-centered, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, we're looking at, like, the two Spider-People's home lives. Peter is, like, a 30-year-old who's hanging out with his old geriatric octogenarian aunt, being served wheat cakes. And Ezekiel is wearing a suit and he's talking to his board of directors. Hmm. Somehow Ezekiel has leveraged his spider powers into a thriving multinational business. Okay. God only knows how he does. He never explains it hey, and we don't need it. Peter what? gets a business later on. Yeah, he does, but he inherits yeah. it from Doc Ock, who's a smart person and a, a scientist. I could think of several ways you could use spider you can, powers. Really? Because like, well, gain I could an think advantage of in business. He could spy on his like competitors. Yeah, he has a spider sense that knows when like people are going to be a danger or a yeah. threat to him. Yeah, but I imagine it's like a physical danger. It's not like oh, someone's going to well, overtake the company. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like hostile if, takeover incoming. I gotta. <laughs> I mean, here's if the thing. that was the case, he should have seen his marriage ending. That's with his spider sense. Yeah. And that ain't the case. Well, well, here's the thing. This guy's really good at. Being Spider Man. Maybe he's honed the spider sense. Right. Into something well, the other thing whoa, whoa, whoa. This guy is not Spider Man. This guy just has spider he power. He's a Spider Man. He's part of the. And Ezekiel's never been a hero. The idea is that, like, Ezekiel got these powers and he turned them into this thing. Right. It's all flexing different muscles. Like, Peter right. used his spider sense to defend himself against physical threats. Maybe Ezekiel, because he never encountered physical threats, right. used his spider powers and his, his, his extrasensory perception to encounter threats to his business or his yeah. personal livelihood as yeah. opposed to a physical livelihood. Morlun and Dex are at a outside dining establishment in the city and they're kind of talking about like what their next move is. He's okay in the daylight? Uh, he is. He's not like a true vampire. He's an energy vampire, which is to say he's nothing. But uh, <laughs> he can be whatever they he want. He can be whatever they want. He, yep. He's just, he's a douche. He's an, he's a it's elemental he force who superheroes. feeds on, well, people of, of totemic power. So while Spider-Man's swinging by, he passes Morlun just overhead. Mm -hmm. And Morlun like looks at him, which triggers Spider-Man's spider sense like it's never been triggered before, which automatically forces him to like scurry under a like awning. Uh -huh. like, like a, a spider. spider. Yeah. 
And he's like, that's never happened before. Neither my spider sense going off like that, nor me automatically scurrying under something like a bug. I also just filled my pants. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if it's poop or webbing. So Spider-Man goes to the school to pick up some like teaching credentials. Because back then, there was a teacher shortage. And oh. in New York City in particular, they were like hungry for anybody who wanted to teach math and science. Okay. You didn't need a certificate to teach math and science. You, you didn't did, even need to know the subjects. You did need to know the subjects. You need <laughs> to have an experience that you could quantify and prove you right. had some expertise to prove you could do it. Right. And so Spider-Man slash Peter Parker is going there to try and like get his paperwork for a teaching credential. And somebody's swatting a spider or trying to deal with a spider under a desk. Yes, she is. In a, in Visual, a shadowy, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, replaying what just happened with Spider-Man, but with an actual spider. While Pete is waiting for the credentials to come through, a student with a gun opens fire in the building. Oh, yikes. Uh, they're covered from head to toe, so you can't see what they is. are yeah. of any kind. Well, we already know who it is. Well, we think we know who it is until he encounters the kid we were talking about before. So Peter grabs a bunch of kids and shoves them into a classroom, seals the door, and he realizes he's in the science lab. Okay. And the teacher is hiding behind the desk and he's like, I don't hear any shots, maybe they stopped. His spider sense goes off and he's like, no. Like he's inside. And he sees the kid who he helped before and he's clutching his chemistry book. All Ooh. right, color me wrong. So it's not him. And he says like, hey, you're Joey, right? You're, you, you're pretty good chemistry. Well, look behind you at the chemical compounds you've got back there and tell me what you see. Because he's like, I gotta get out of here and be Spider-Man. Right, right, right. But I'm surrounded by these people and they probably have phones on them. Yeah. So he convinces Joey to mix a bunch of chemical compounds together that would create the illusion of smoke ah. that he will then unload into the air vents that will fill the hallway so, so that, that he, he can, can change into Spider-Man. Spider yeah, okay. So Pete changes his clothes, the gunman is just screaming at anyone and everyone about mm -hmm. how everything's not fair and he's gonna kill everybody. And Spider-Man like just kind of very quietly approaches him and he's, he's just like, who's there? Where are you? He goes, I'm right here. Here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then- Grabs him out of the smoke and pulls him into it. <laughs> yeah, so he just attacks the, the gunman and he's like, what is wrong with you? Like, how can you do this? And he pulls off the mask and it's just some kid. Right. And he's like, it's not fair, like they kept beating on me and I can't take it anymore. Uh, it's a different victim of... Of bullying in this school. Yeah. And so they haul the kid away, the fire department's there, everything's going on, and the gym teacher's talking to Peter about how like... I Do you even work here? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What the hell are you doing in my school again? But he says like, you know, the fact is like, it was really brutal how he was treated. But he was a geek and like, you know, that's kind of how it is. You know, like, boys will be boys, you know this what I mean? This guy sucks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, He's just yep. like, I guess, like, I, you know, I guess sometimes kids snap, but like, not like this. Like, he, it was really his fault. Right. Like, it's really bad. Yeah. And Peter just sees, like, how that is, and he's like, and the guy's like, well, I, so I heard, by the way, that you helped some kids. Good for you. Like, so all I did was keep my head down and just let the right people do their job. Uh-huh. The right people, Spider-Man, right? Past hero, and uh, <laughs> Not as the police. yeah, and as they're having this awkward conversation, the science teacher just says like, "I quit, I'm leaving," and he just walks out, oh. and he goes like, "Eh, students using chemicals improperly, I cannot be in this environment." I think it's more about the shooting, but yeah, <laughs> and uh, he says, and the, and the dim teacher is like, "Well." He's not the first one to quit, like, on the fly. He won't be the last. Science is kind of wasted on kids at this school anyway. Oh, my God. This and guy then, sucks. And he goes, oh, I didn't get your name, by the way. I'm sorry. What is this guy's job? He's a gym teacher. Gym teacher. How come he's not, like, the school counselor? Because right. he's very blah about everything. <laughs> yeah, he, is, he has the exact same attitude as my high school guidance counselor. But uh, he goes, mine is Peter Parker, and I'm the new science teacher. Eh. Like, no. Oh, it's very presumptuous of you. I don't know if they're going to... Yeah, well, they're, they're going to need somebody. Like, uh, I was thinking janitor. <laughs> Yeah, you were a freelance photographer for 20 years. You could Do you want to run our floors. school paper? Yeah. <laughs> and then we see him teaching science. teaching science. Woo. And he's fun and he's like, he's reaching kids. Joey's really intently listening to him. Uh -huh. And like a couple of the kids are passing notes about like what a dweeb Mr. Parker is. Because oh, he likes science. Because he likes science and because he's nerd. really passionate about it. 
Kids are really, really quick to make fun of teachers who are very passionate about subjects. Right, right. The trick is to not care. Uh, so the principal calls him into his first into his office on his first day, and he's like, "So, how's your first day?" He's like, "Oh, it's good. You know, it's not a good sign that you want me in your office." Eh. And he goes, "Well, I didn't realize that you had such generous friends." And he's like, "What are you talking about?" And so they go into the office, and Ezekiel's there, and he's <laughs> like, "What's up?" And he's like, "Yeah, the, the this dude just gave us an endowment." <laughs> and Pete's like, "Well, that's nice." It's very nice of this guy to intrude on our personal lives and do this. Uh, let's go out for lunch and celebrate, Ezekiel. So they go to lunch <laughs> at the same... Uh, at, no. So they go to lunch, and they're just kind of... He's like, what are you doing? Yeah. And he's like, I just wanted to get your attention because you, you know, you know you're not listening to me. And, <laughs> I love that they went out for called. pizza. Yeah, no, yeah, but I, I like to prove that yeah. I'm kind of a big shot. Uh, yeah, huh? I like to throw money around. Yeah. So Makes he says, like... like a big man. Exactly. So basically... <laughs> Makes you feel like a big man, does yeah. it? Does it? Yeah. Well, so, well, yeah. So Ezekiel basically is like, let me give you a little bit more of a breakdown about like what the new status quo for Spider-Man is about to be. Uh-huh. Uh, he's like, the, the Marvel Universe has lots of animal-based or totemic-based heroes who have counter villains who reflect or represent those types of things. Right, like, there's a reason You'll for notice that. that like the greatest enemy of the X-Men is another mutant, and how Captain America's greatest enemy is a Nazi skull man, like, and how most of your villains are animals, like you fight octopi and vultures and rhinos and, they're all and scorpions. Green. And they're all green, which is just kind of a unfortunate accident, but whatever. <laughs> really? They're like well, you're all red green. And blue. There's four green ones on this page, and then the green goblin's not even one of them. The goblin is like a goblin, they're not, it's not a real animal. The colors have nothing to do with the message, <laughs> which is about I know, how... I'm just noticing that there's so many green... <laughs> yes, well, that's because green goes against the, the red, red very yeah, well. Yeah. What about the kingpin? What animal is he? He's fast. <laughs> They're not all animals, it's just no, a it's just lot of them. Quite a, quite a few of them are. Yeah. We see a black cat in here, but we don't see the black cat. But you know, you get, oh, you I get, thought that was the jackal for a second. You get the picture. It's not a jackal. But the jackal would be, but he's been dead. And we're trying to not think about the clone saga right now. Yeah. Anyway, he's talking about how, like, but he also refers to some of these guys as, like, none of them have animal powers. Like, they're all pretenders. Right, you're the I mean, only the one. lizard has animal powers. He can regrow his limb. But he has to turn into a lizard. He's not like always a lizard. He's a man who had to take a chemical and become a lizard man. Like the vulture has to wear a suit to fly. Doctor Octopus needs extra fake arms. Rhino's been stuck in a suit. Yeah. You know that kind of thing. Scorpion you know, has Peter a suit. had to be bitten by a spider. Yes, but the spider, he, as Ezekiel established, like picked him and is like sought him out and bestowed yeah. him powers. The lizard gave himself the ability to turn into a lizard. Yes, by and he was trying chemicals. and he was trying to like fix himself. It yeah. was more of a science experiment. Right. Peter is Spider Man twenty four seven. He doesn't wear, like he doesn't become a spider person. He doesn't person. turn into a spider when he gets mad or whatever. Yeah, but he's more or less <laughs> saying that like, because you are like a pure specimen of this representative of the animal kingdom, other things, pretenders will be like attracted to you. It's why there are so many animal based creatures that'll go after you. They're reacting they, to you. Yeah, they know that you're like better than them you know, totemically speaking. And so they're like trying to re remove you. All right. Oh, that is silly. Oh, Pete's like, Pfft. And then he talks about how like Ezekiel went to Africa and he went to the spider temple there and he gave a blood sacrifice and he, what? as a result, got his spider powers. That like Ezekiel did the, like the book work to find out that like, there's the, a spider there's god. There's a spider god, and the spider god chooses a representative every so often, and uh -huh. Ezekiel knows that, like, there's only one or two ways to become that. One is if the spider god chooses you, the way the spider god presumably chose Peter, or you can offer, like, a blood sacrifice to it at great personal expense. Like, mm. it has to hurt like you're dying in order to do it. Okay. Uh, and, like, it also should pre prevent more Ezekiels, you <laughs> know? Also, Ezekiel, like, knows about it in kind of, like, a really fundamental way. I'm just making the point of, like, why there aren't an army of Spider-Men. Right, right. Where everyone's like, oh, yeah, I'll sacrifice that. It. Yeah. Right. But uh, it's, it's actually really a hard. popular cruise destination. Yeah, just go to Africa. Go to the spider sample. We cut your arm a little bit, and you're good to go. So, arguably, Ezekiel is the head of a corporation because he just has the right mindset. Like, he's just that freaking dedicated. Exactly. He was dedicated he enough to, like, sacrifice to get these spider abilities. Mm -hmm. well, he probably he would have been running a corporation anyway. He right. was also dedicated to the pursuit of the knowledge yeah. of the temple and what happens oh, yeah. with He's it. really driven. He is a driven man, yeah. yes. And he is also intimately aware of what it means to be 
a representative of these things. And, and together they polished off practically a whole pie. Well, yes. Also, That's, they're... Uh, he's got a hunger, you see. Well, it's also <laughs> their uh, metabolisms are very high. Right. Because they the gotta powers. eat these pizza. Uh, 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 they're two grown men. It's not that weird for them to eat an entire pizza. <laughs> exactly. So Ezekiel's <laughs> like, the reason why I'm like really, really insistent on it right now is because uh -huh. something is coming that you're not ready for, mm. and it is gonna ruin your day. Right. And it's gonna kill you. And he's like, That's, you know that it is the totem of the bird. Yeah. The bird who eats the spider. <laughs> yeah, it's what? not. It's it's Morlun who is. I'm just, sorry. It's the totem of the fly who chokes the spider when he tries to eat it. So Morlun is the reason why Ezekiel's seeking out Spider-Man. And he even names him and he's like, this is Morlun. And he goes like, well, how do I, how do you know that Morlun wants me? And he's right. like, because you wear a spider on your chest. Huh. You, you advertise. You attracted him. Yeah. Well, why didn't he come for him at any point prior? Oh, because. In the like decade or more right. that he's been why spider Right, why not? And it could be because Morlun was happy to eat other well, things. Well, yeah, that German. Yeah, he did have the German, but that was, he didn't have them his whole life. You understand, there are so many <laughs> European superheroes, and they're yeah. easy right. because they're European. Right. He, and he, he never heard of any the of them pond. because Morlun killed them all. Yeah. But like, Morlun was in Europe for a while, now he's here. It's yep. logically go for Spider. Are you telling me that Morlun does not have some sort of totem creature? Like, he's not like a pure yeah, he's, opposite? No, he's not like, no, there is a creature in later in a later story in this run that is like in opposition to the Spider. But it's it's more, you know, villain of the week. In this, it's more just like, Morlun is this thing that exists in this universe of bullshit mm -hmm. that also seeks out, you know, avatars of the of the gods. That's kind of a weird choice. Yeah. Like, I get it, but it's a little weird. It's is weird. It, is it in, so it's like the, if there was like a jaguar god that gave people jaguar powers, he'd be trying to eat them too. Absolutely. Like not just the spiders. No, yeah. But everything. Right. So he went for Black Panther and Black Panther like backhanded. There is like, a no. Morlun story with Black Panther, but and it should have been way cooler and it, because mm. yeah. Well anyway. He should have gone after Black Panther. That's exactly what I think of when you think of another character. Oh, I know. Yeah. Bast? Perfect. Yeah. Oh, totally. I was chosen by the gods. Oh yeah, no, yeah. that's exactly I can't think right. of any others, in fact. No. <laughs> that's so like, like that's the, the only, only other one. one. It's almost like Straczynski invented Morlun to be a Black Panther villain, <laughs> and then was like, I got Spider-Man, I'm just gonna use him now. Yeah. Ah, but Black Panther isn't popular. Right. And I'm writing a Spider-Man story, <laughs> so, so I'll just make it a Spider-God. Yeah. Yeah. The Spider-God has been established, and it's why Black Panther, like, allows Spider-Man to eat the heart-shaped herbs. Because, like, the Spider-God is an African god mm -hmm. that knows Bast, and is therefore technically like a chum. Uh-huh. You're, you're, we're buds. We're doing the yeah. same thing. Okay. They don't really hang out much, but when they do, they're totally fine. Okay. Uh, I don't see that happen until much later on in this run. I've never seen Spider-Man go to Wakanda and and T'Challa be like, "Hey, that's <laughs> uh, my good this. friend. It's it's my it's my it's my divinely obligated friend." No. Well, you see, your God and my God are friends, so we have to. So be I friends guess now. we're friends. It's right. like if our parents are friends. Yeah. <laughs> So Ezekiel takes Peter to his facility, like his, his high rise, and he's showing off all of his stuff. They get in the elevator, it's playing like Helter Skelter on Muzak. And he's like, why, is, why did you do that? He's like, oh, I, it keeps my employees on their toes. <laughs> and you're like, okay, I guess that's a joke. So no. they go on and on, and then Ezekiel reveals this like special reinforced room oh. that has like enough food for you know, months and oh. uh, its own like self-recycling toilet and like a, a big DVD set and all this other stuff. And he's like, I built this. It's got reinforced adamantium walls and blah, blah, blah. I built this because I knew Morlun was coming. Oh. But when I found out about you, I knew he was gonna come for you, not me. So you're gonna stay so in here. So you're gonna have to get in here and that will be my penance for you. Cause like, you, I feel bad that you are gonna get all the problems that is, are associated with this thing that I know everything about, and... Why? Eh, it's not your fault. Yeah, but yeah. it kind of is. Oh. So, <laughs> is he, so, so Peter's like... Okay. Yeah, so Peter's like, I, I don't run from fights. Yeah, what do you, I fight people all the time. I fought Thanos at least twice. <laughs> I could probably beat this lame energy vampire you just invented for this story. I would love it if Ezekiel was like, <laughs> who? Yeah, right? Yeah, what? What are you talking about? Myth. Thanos, <laughs> Galactus, giant. Guy I'm talking about an energy vampire, something real. <laughs> so Peter goes, "I'm not. I'm not gonna go in here. I'm not gonna do that." And Zeke goes, "Like, here's, okay. Let me put it another way. 
you're never going to win. Like, cosmically speaking, you will lose. Like, you can't win. All I'm saying is, I eat garlic, like, all the time. So what's It's not do? really a vampire. <laughs> None of that works. So, he's like, I, 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 Right, like, I, you are destined to You're destined to, to be killed this by this dumb vampire. At some point. In a douchey outfit. <laughs> Which, by the way, is established in this book. Like, Morlan just wears, like, crazy wrappings. And then Dex takes him to, like, you know, men's warehouse. <laughs> and he gets, like, a beautiful suit with, like, this, like, ascot and everything. And that's where we establish, like, Morlun dressing like this. Right. And then other writers just forget and just make him wear that like it's his costume. <laughs> oh, he always... He's ancient. He wore ascots before they yeah, were a thing. Like, no, he, he, they invented for the story. So, uh, you know, he... So Morlun's been hiding in the bows of the ship, and he's like, okay, I'm ready. Right, like, I'm yeah. ready to draw him out. Yeah. So Pete's at home, and then, like, the thing that Peter was watching is interrupted by... Just horror in the streets of New York. So Pete goes to the like building that's on fire, and he saves a couple people, and then Morlun just punches him into a taxi cab. <laughs> and yeah, it's really easy to draw out Spider-Man. Yeah, just cause mayhem. <laughs> right, and he's he. This he, is a lot of mayhem. It's a yeah. lot of mayhem, and the internal monologue for Peter is great. And I don't want to discount it. We don't really get a chance to get into it too much, but that's why I want you to buy the book. But he's he, his internal monologue when he hits the cab is, "I taste blood as I hit the car." Nothing's ever hit me that hard. Not the Hulk or Thor or anybody. And for the first time, I don't have a wisecrack at hand because nothing's funny anymore. Wow. Wait, 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 wait. Morlon hits harder than the Hulk. Than the Hulk. Yeah. What? Yeah. Is it because he's, like, weak to Morlon? Like, I mean, cosmically? Like, I, <laughs> like, Morlon does, pick like, something. spider damage or something? Ha, pick it. Because, <laughs> yeah, I got plus three against Spider-Man. <laughs> Here's the reality. If the Hulk fought Morlun, Morlun wouldn't have a snowball's <laughs> chance in hell. Right. At all, don't at me. But I'm an energy vampire. I'll just <laughs> I'll take just, your gamma yeah. energy. Yeah. yeah, you know what will happen? You'll die <laughs> if you did that. Hulk would smash you to uh, oh, to paste. Yeah. But let's pretend. I mean... Because, like, cosmically, Hulk, well, he's... How about a, this? The Hulk has never hit Spider-Man at full strength. Oh, yeah. okay. Why would that happen? Sure. Nor would Thor. Yeah. So, yeah. like, oh, they, right. I've been hit harder... By more long than I ever have been by the Hulk. By my friends. Not then the Hulk that's like, could hit me, but then the Hulk has hit me. Yes. Okay, so, so that's fine. his threshold. Right. He doesn't know. So Pete, like, throws a few punches at him. Morlon takes them and then right. just punches him in the chest. And, like, we get this... He doesn't even punch him. He palms him in the chest. He does. And it's like, he caves him in. Right. We get, like, a kind of color effect. So maybe he is, like, weak to Morlon. Yeah, there seems to be his energy coming from Morlon's... Hand. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's probably like sucking it's energy a it's just while a he yeah. hits him. Yeah, it could be that too. Mm. So they're fighting, and uh, and Pete kind of like just goes, "Okay, I'll start throwing my jokes." So he says, "You know, uh, most of the guys that I fight actually explain to me why we're fighting. Like they <laughs> explain me their motive." And Morlon's like, "I like you. You're funny." <laughs> I like Peter says, "Don't tell me. Tell Otterman." I appreciate the effort, Spider-Man, but like, I'm going to beat you. Yeah. Like. And I have the patience of a being that's been around for thousands of years because I am one of those. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm not going to get tired or give up. You, on the other hand, will get tired. Mm -hmm. You will get hungry or you'll fall asleep and then I'll kill you. Sometime like, you have to poop. Yes. Right. You'll so need to go to the bathroom. I'm not going to defeat you right now, apparently. Yeah. But, like, I will. Well, I, you may think you're winning, yeah. but you're not. Because, as you can see, like, you're tired already. Yeah. And I haven't even started. And your punches didn't do anything. Yeah. All and you goes, can do is dodge. He goes, but I want you to know, solemnly speaking... It's nothing personal. And Pete's like, you're going to kill me. And there's nothing personal. Screw you, man. <laughs> and he goes into this great thing where he's like, I have fought aliens and gods and freaks and mutants. You are nothing. Bring it on. <laughs> I and have to face high school teenagers tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. You I, are nothing. I have to be up in the morning. <laughs> so, and you're wearing an ascot. <laughs> so bring it. And they fight. And he's fought harder than he's ever fought in his entire life. You get these... Great two-page splash of him just... They're just tearing across the city, and he never stops. Mm. And everything that he says, like, of what he's done, I hit him, I hit him, and he just keeps coming. And that just keeps repeating over and over again. Mm -hmm. I mean, all you really have to do to stop Spider-Man is just take off his mask. Then he has to run away. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So he uh, he realizes, like, we're in the city. Like, I gotta get out of here. So he goes up the wall, he crawls up, and Morlan just starts climbing up the wall because uh -huh. he's just super strong. He's like, oh, shit. <laughs> he's, like, punching handholds in the wall to yeah. climb. Yeah. It's cool. So uh, Spider-Man gets to, he runs to the top of the building. Morlun is practically already there, blasts through the doorway that led up to the building. Mm -hmm. It's like, how fast is this guy? Mm -hmm. And they fight. Uh, he knocks him off the building, and they're, they're, they're going to fall. Who knocks who off the building? Uh, Morlun 
knocks Spider-Man off the building, okay. and then they start to fall. And Spider-Man's like, are you crazy? We're going to die. And he goes, no, just you. <laughs> and uh, so Spider-Man just barely manages to get away. Uh, he swings into a building. Morlun hits the pavement. A woman nearby is like, holy crap, dude, are you okay? Morlun grabs him and starts absorbing her energy. Oh, jeez. And Spider-Man's like, oh, no. And he jumps in. He's like hitting him. And he goes, no, you don't hit civilians. You're not hurting these people. Yeah. You want me? Keep it on me. Yeah, yeah. What are and you Morlun's doing? like, oh. You care about people. Like, now I <laughs> oh, have this to is gonna be yeah. easy. Yeah, this is gonna be way faster. Uh, so Morlun like grabs cars, like throwing them at people. Pete's like throwing himself under them and catching them with his whole body. Right, right. Morlun grabs by the throat. He's just hitting him like Mr. Furious in the chest. <laughs> Pete's like, oh my god. <laughs> he barely gets away. Changes into his Peter Parker outfit, and he he looks like hell. He's just dragged through the mud. Yeah. And then Morlun's there. And he goes, I I once I touched you. I could find you anywhere. It's not about you dressing like Spider-Man. It's, oh, it's about knowing you. So he he plows Spider-Man into a restaurant. Yikes. Like Peter Parker in his right, regular Peter clothes. Parker, yeah. yeah. And we get a move the car George moment. Pete like it's crushed up against a bar. And he goes, you don't have a can of spinach, do you? It's, the bartender's like, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's... Oh. I'm sorry, it was yeah. a terrible joke. That's yeah. for the people reading the book. That's yeah, not for well, you. <laughs> this wasn't for you, I'm sorry. So, he, In fact, it's not even for the people reading the book. Yes. No, it's for JMS. <laughs> so Pete's just getting the tar kicked out of him. Yeah. And he's like, I can't, he, he will hurt these people to get to me. I can't leave. Right. And so the, the, Peter Parker's getting his ass kicked by this monster. And he's like, okay, like, you're not going to die today, Peter. It's not going to happen for you because, like, You've got the costume, you've got the power, you're Spider-Man, act like it. Just puts the costume back on, like tears off his clothes, puts mm -hmm. the mask back on. Great power, great responsibility, and a great left hook. <laughs> Knocks him into the kitchen, the gas stove gets opened, gas is leaking in, Morlun grabs the matches, mm. lights it, Spider-Man barely makes it out of the kitchen before the, the kitchen explodes, splintering glass and wood everywhere, hits him in the back, his whole back is just torn up and miserable. Morlun's clothes are ruined, Oh no. Which means you should not be dressing like an ass anymore. No, he yeah. shouldn't. But uh, so Spider Man runs away, and Morlon's like, Dex, I'm gonna need more clothes. <laughs> like, and that gives Peter enough time to escape. Right. Okay. Uh, so Peter runs to Ezekiel's high rise, yep. blasts in the wall, and he goes, You gotta help me. You gotta tell me more about his, this Morlon guy. I need help. Yeah. And he goes, I'm sorry. I told you. I tried. It's too late. Look. Like, he was looking for you. When he touched you, he can find you anywhere on the planet. He wasn't supposed to know where you were. Yeah. Yeah. He just knew you existed and he was looking for you. But once he touched you, that was it. He can find you anywhere you go on the whole planet. And he's like, swell. <laughs> so. Oh, great. Thanks. Yeah. So Maybe he, this should have been brought to my attention yesterday. <laughs> exactly. So he says, like, you know, you said, like, you, you know, you said that, like, you wanted to help me. Well, help me and he goes no i can't man he's looking for you right i got i got a board of directors i got shareholders i got a job i have employees like i have a life yeah i'm not doing that please right. tell me peter gives him the great power comes great responsibility <laughs> speech and this guy just like laughs in his face about it he straight up doesn't he says i have never asked anyone for anything in my life and i don't expect anything either but all i'm saying is if you have this great power can you please help me Right. And he's like, no. No. And he goes... I'm scared. He goes, no, you're on your own. He goes, well, it won't be the first time. Huh. And then he leaves. So... So Ezekiel's not much help. Yeah. Oh, and as he's leaving, he looks out the window and he sees another building's on fire. Oh, jeez. He's like, oh, my God. So he gets out there... Right, hang on. Stop. Peter, call... The Avengers. The, Avengers, the Fantastic, the Fantastic Four, Four. Four. Get some yeah. help. Help! No, you hold know on. more people than Ezekiel know, who can help he's you. He's like, this is it. Like, and JMS is like, I'm writing a Spider-Man book. <sighs> Call Galactus. What? No! He doesn't have a phone, man. Also, Galactus isn't his friend. Just anyone? <laughs> you can eat the planet now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Burn it all down. <laughs> so, Ezekiel just wrecked a bunch of cars and a yep. bunch of buildings. He's hey, got a where'd little... you go? I, I... Yeah, I started the party without you. He's got a kid. I'm dressed like a butler now. Yeah, he changed his clothes a little bit. Still got the color scheme, purple and blue, which is a terrible combo. Yeah. He's got this kid, and he says, like, once I see the kid, I'm not thinking anything anymore. I'm just feeling rage. Mm. And so Ezekiel throws the kid. He catches the kid, and the kid starts crying. And he says, like, basically he just says, like, 
I, I don't even care that I'm gonna die. I just want to take a piece of this guy. Mm. So Spider-Man just yells nice. and like just hauls into him, and then dumps like 80 gallons of webbing onto him, mm -hmm. and then just runs away again. Like yep. just gives chase. Yeah. Uh, there's a cute move the car George moment where. He goes like, I need to call somebody. I got to call anybody. I need help here. There we go. All uh, right. But unfortunately, I have no pockets. Huh. So he steals change from a homeless person's <laughs> cup. And he has a sign on pl blind, please give. Mm -hmm. And the guy goes, hey, you're not supposed to do that. And Spider-Man goes, yeah, you're supposed to be blind. He goes, touche. <laughs> so Spider-Man calls the school to tell them that he won't be there that morning. Because it's six in the morning, he's supposed to be at school right now. Wow, he's responsible. He's and they're like, he's a little too responsible. Yeah. <laughs> and the, 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 the lady who works there is like, usually we wait until the first week to start making up excuses for not coming into work. Yeah. Gives him a really hard time. Yep. Does he say like, I'm gonna die? No. No, well, no. how would he explain that later? Exactly. So he goes, okay, the screams are starting again as I hang up the phone. He's already started to look for me. I, who do I call? I just want to sleep. I just want to like lie down and stop. Yeah. Can I do that? Can I just stop for two minutes? No. And uh, so Morlon's got this woman. He's got her by the throat. She's like, I didn't even do anything. He's like, no, no, no scream louder. I don't think he's heard you. <laughs> so Spider-Man comes up behind with a lamppost. Like, oh, I heard you. Boom, hits him in the back. Nice. Boom, hits him more. Just keeps bending this thing over him. Yeah, nice. He's like, come on, I had to hurt. Come on. <laughs> Morlon pivots the lamppost and then just splats Spider-Man with the lamppost against the wall. Jeez. A car drives by, Spider-Man webs the car, gets dragged by the car away from him. Uh-huh. Uh, meanwhile, Ezekiel is at his board of directors meeting. They're all talking. He's not paying attention. They're all talking about, like, how they're going to consolidate their earnings That's, and blah, uh, blah, blah. And he's just looking at... You know, business stuff. Yeah, business, 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 merger, stock options. <laughs> and, and he's looking at a burning skyline. <laughs> yeah, and he's yeah. like, damn it. I am a dick. So yeah. Pete's like... I should try calling the the Fantastic Four. There we but, go. Uh, but I don't remember their phone number, and uh, I only have fifty cents. I, I think it's just the number four a bunch of times. <laughs> just, so he just he just auto dials, and he's like, "Come on, pick up, pick up," and the phone goes, "Hi, it's MJ," and he goes, "MJ, oh. MJ, it's Peter. This is Mary Jane. I'm away from the phone, but leave uh, a message." Geez. And he hangs up, gets the change back, and he's like, <sighs> "So he calls Aunt May, and Aunt May's like." Hey, Peter, what's going on? He's like, oh, yeah, I'm fine. She goes, you sound like you're coming down to something. He goes, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm just tired. And she goes, like, you're always so sweet. You're always thinking about other people. Like, you know, because he's like, uh, he goes, I'm just tired. I just wanted to call and see how you're doing. And she's like, well, you're so sweet. You're always thinking about everybody else. And he, he goes, uh, well, tell me about your day. And she's like, I'm fine. I'm going to drop off some clothes. You know, I got to get ready for the summer, you know, because I got with the winter and with the summer, blah, blah. And he goes, yeah, listen, Aunt May, uh, <laughs> you know, I love you, right? Like, I don't get to say it very often, but like, I'm really lucky to have you, and you were very, you're a very important part of my life, and no matter what happens, remember that I'll always love you. And she's like, Peter? Like, what are you saying? And the phone goes, please deposit another 35 cents. Oh, and he's like, I have to go now, but I love you. And she's like, Peter, I love you too. And he hangs up, and he's like, okay. And Morlan's behind him. Mm -hmm. And he goes, just so you know, I'm not gonna die easy. And I would just, love it if Morlan was like, you have a family? Oh, I can't do this. Kill. Yes. Well, he doesn't care. No. So he just jumps on Morlon. He's just yeah. getting at him. And then Morlon gets punched in the back of the head nice. by Ezekiel. Yay. And Ezekiel's like, I changed my mind, P. <laughs> Ezekiel calls him P. P. Because when he calls him Peter, Pete's like, uh, you got to ease up on the Peter stuff. Yeah. He's like, okay, I'll call you P. It's like, that's the same fucking You thing. could yeah, just right? call me Spider-Man. It's still a clue. You, yeah, just call me Spidey. Yeah. I'm so, not calling you Spidey. That's ridiculous. So Morlon is like, there's another one? Like, he doesn't say anything, but he's staring at Ezekiel. Right. And then Spider-Man kicks him in the back. He goes, hey, we, we were having a conversation here, man. You don't turn your back. Uh -huh. And then Ezekiel punches Morlon in the face. And he goes, these kids these days, they got no class. So Spider-Man and Ezekiel just start wailing on Morlon. And it's a really fun sequence. Yeah, of, yeah. Of motion. yeah when so. Morlon just grabs Ezekiel and then just chomps on his head and absorbs his life energy. And then Spider-Man tries to get him off of him. Uh -huh. And then Ezekiel seemingly dies and falls in the water. Wow. He says, I'm sorry, Pete. I thought I could do it. And then he falls in the water. See, this is why I said no earlier. Well, you killed me. <laughs> Thanks. Now everyone in my company is going to go bankrupt because of you. Great yeah. power did nothing. <laughs> Die. 
So Ezekiel dies or falls in the water. Yeah. Uh, Morlun is like, mm, well, that wasn't f totally filling, but it was a nice, uh, it was a nice appetizer. I think I'll have, have a cappuccino and go find you later. Yeah. And uh, so he just leaves, and <laughs> so Spider-Man jumps in the water. He's like. Trying searching to find for Ezekiel, him. Yeah. and then Morlun can't follow him because it's running water or something. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's the river. He throws some pennies, count them all! Uh, Damn it! <laughs> so Morlun's gone, Pete can't find Ezekiel's body, Oh. and he's like, no body. he died for nothing. He and didn't he die. At, and he looks at the pier, and there's some of Morlun's blood, and he's like, maybe not. Hmm. So he breaks the pier, grabs a piece of the wood that has the blood on it, swings home, goes to his microscope, <laughs> and he's just looking at it, and he's like, okay, Apparently, Morlun's blood is an amalgam of every kind of cell, like animal cell, insect cell, pure forms of DNA. Okay. And he's like, this explains why we can go after me, specifically because like, I'm a totem apparently. Right. And so I just found that, out. And that because he's made of everything, like the idea is that his the reason why he feeds is because his cells break down over time, and that like they require periodic recharging from a pure source, that being somebody like me. Okay. So he gets a new costume, and he goes, apparently, according to Ezekiel, the purer the, the source, the stronger the charge, which is why he wants me, but that doesn't make any sense, because <laughs> I don't believe that I am a pure source, and so I'm going to prove it. So Spider-Man goes to the Southern New York nuclear power plant, uh -huh. and he triggers a reactor alert, which completely evacuates the area, and then he goes to the, like, reactor core and he says like this is where we're gonna dance Morlan you and me because I have reached critical mass and I'm taking you with me so so he's he's operating under the hypothesis that he is strengthened by radiation by the radioactive spider by the yes, yes. so he's like I'm going to where I believe my strength came from yes which is this science-based science yeah not power. your not your like magic yeah, bullshit we'll see and radiation especially yeah so he, so Morlan, of course, like feels where he is. So he's going uh -huh. with Dex. <laughs> Spider Man has webbed all the web, all the uh, all the security cameras. Okay. And so he's like he's mixing like nuclear compounds together. Okay. And he has basically figured out how to create a kind of like radioactive cocktail that he's going to inject into himself to like superpower himself. It's more like to irradiate himself. So that he will cause cellular damage to Morlun? Yes. Oh, so that he's not pure anymore? He's already, he believes, he believes that because of the radiation from the spider that he already has some like level of radiation or radioactivity in him. Sure. That like, hopefully adding this amount won't kill him, but okay. it'll protect him because he has like a built-in tolerance. Spoilers, it does kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers, he dies and that's the end of Spider-Man forever. Uh, so he's like, okay. And he goes, I don't even know like how much of this I'm supposed to give to myself. Right. Like I kind of like, I'm, I'm winging it. I have, I'm on, I'm on like an hour sleep <laughs> yep. in three days. I don't yep. even know if I mix the right things. Yeah. <laughs> but he's like, this might just be a mojito. Yeah. He goes, well, <laughs> here we go. And he just injects himself. And he's like, the pain is beyond description. It's like my, every nerve is on fire. And have I made a terrible mistake? Yeah. And then he passes out from the pain. Right. And when Morlun shows up, Spider-Man's just passed out on the ground. Right. <laughs> and he goes, well, you killed yourself. Cool. Okay, well, <laughs> at least there's some residual energy within you. And he grabs Spider-Man's face, and then he starts to burn. <laughs> and he's like, oh, shit, get away from me. <laughs> and Spider-Man's like, just when you think you know somebody, they start to surprise you. <laughs> you thought you were feeding on the spider in me, but you know what's funny? There's one thing that I am not, and that's pure. <laughs> and he punches Morlun with this, like, radioactive burst. And he says, the spider that bit me was subjected to a massive dose of radiation. And whatever the spider had, whether it was like totemic power from my god, <laughs> or whether it was like the inherent abilities of a spider that was augmented by radiation, whatever Which it is, is much cooler. the radioactivity is what came and made me what I am. Spider-Man's just beating on this guy and he's letting him have it all. And he goes like, this is not just for me, this is for everybody that he's hurt to get to me, mm -hmm. and for Ezekiel. Mm. Until eventually Morlun like, reverts into this kind of creepy insectoid creature, oh. which I guess is like its original form. Okay. And he says, like, please, I promise, I promise I will never come near you again if you just let me live. All I want to do is live. That's all I've ever wanted. And no. Yeah, Spider-Man's <laughs> like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. And then Dex comes out with a gun, and he goes, 
I quit. And he shoots he's, and he shoots Morlun to death. <laughs> and Morlun just falls back and goes, this isn't fair. Don't you know how old I am? Huh. And then just fades into dust. Wow. I've lived for hundreds of years, thousands of years, yeah. and I die like this right From now? From Renfield? Like you're I gonna got shot? I got shot? By this you? Is, that's lame. <laughs> <laughs> you see, it was the... It was the irradiation that weakened me, but now anything will hurt. Yeah. Oh, I got a splinter. Oh. <laughs> so the so Morlun dies, and then Dex and Spider Man. Yeah, you leave. see the body dissolve. Yep, it dissolves. No, no, no. This is a classic vampire trick. It turns into mist. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, you always I've have seen this a skeleton before. behind you to turn yeah. into mist. <laughs> Spider Man tracks down Dex in the woods outside the uh, facility. Yeah. And yeah, because he murdered a person. Yeah. Uh, also, he, he also facilitated. Well, I'd be very hesitant to call him a person. That's true. Well, but he yes. is a person, though. He I did mean, he, facilitate the deaths of a lot of people. He, he helped more lot. That's true. He is still guilty. And but Spider Man doesn't know how many people. No, but yeah. he, he faces off against Dex, and Dex says, He hurt me a lot. Yeah. And Spider Man's like, Get out, never come back, or I'll hurt you more. Mm. And then. Spider-Man leaves and Dex sings Ding Dong the Witch is Dead with huh. this like kind of a weird mood changer. Yeah. And uh, that's never a fun song to sing. No. Yeah, ever. he's a little crazy. Right. Yeah. So Spider-Man like goes to the, a rooftop nearby and he just kind of like sinks down and he says, hey God, it's me Peter. Listen, I, I don't ask a lot of favors, but can you not give me a fight like that for a long, long time, please? <laughs> so Spider-Man goes to uh, Ezekiel's building yeah and, and the whole place is empty oh oh okay. as if the company dissolved yeah or moved and he's like are you mm. out there did you make it right. and then he sees there's a rubber spider attached to the window <laughs> and he sees outside the glass there's footprints hmm. and he's like oh man like and he excitedly shouts ezekiel He's just so excited that yeah. Ezekiel didn't die. Yeah. Not another one on my conscience. Yep. And uh, Ezekiel is in a limousine being taken to places unknown to help people. Okay. Because Spider Man was his example. Like, I've learned that now I need to be helpful. Yeah. Uh, I was not using my powers responsibly. Right. So Spider Man swings around the city for a little bit. He's like, I'm alive. This is amazing. It feels great. Aha. Uh -huh. Like the world's beautiful. Everything's beautiful. Even you're beautiful, traffic cop. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And oh. then he. You're, even you're a beautiful old savings and loan. <laughs> exactly. Merry Christmas, movie house. <laughs> so he goes. He so he goes home to his crappy apartment, and he like tears off his root, like his Spider-Man costume. He's wearing all this like bandages, bleeding and everything. <laughs> and his skin is slumping. And he goes, off. "Well, now time to do the one thing I've been waiting to do, forever." And he goes to the bathroom. <laughs> and then and he then just he <laughs> yeah. And then he just lies down in bed, and he just. Passes out. I don't yeah. know if you realize this, but uh, all that radiation gives you the massive runs. Yeah. So he just passes Gross. out. Like his costume is just like torn on the floor. He's got like all these bandages, and blood all over his place. He's like, Later. oh no! So he passes out, and then uh, Aunt May shows up to uh, <gasps> because she was really worried about him because he left a really cryptic conversation. Yeah. Like, I love you. You know, I love you. Yeah. Right? yeah. So, right. she, course, Peter. so she shows up and she finds his tattered costume on the ground and Peter bloody and unconscious. And discovers that he's Spider-Man. Wow. And that's how they end the first arc. Okay, this is the cool part of the book. This is the coolest part of the book. <laughs> yeah, she's like, she clearly doesn't know. Yeah, she never knew. Except she always knew or something, right? She knew in 400 <laughs> when it was a fake actress. Oh, that's right. It was told right. who it was, was by Norman Osborn. Yeah, I yeah, no, in this, she never knew. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh my God, Spider-Man <laughs> beat up my nephew. <laughs> Jesus, Jonah. <laughs> So, look like, at all these. What I have to believe, I can't believe that he's Spider-Man. Yeah, no, she's not an idiot. <laughs> she's not in denial. Yeah, that'd be funny. So Aunt May gets the costume. She finds oh. out who he is. Later, she'll like. Well, in the next arc. Yeah. It's the the next issue or whatever or two issues is called the conversation, mm. where Aunt May and Peter just talk about that. Okay. And it's so, really cool. So how long have you been doing this? Right. Yeah. Since I was fifteen. Oh no, there's a whole, hopefully we'll get into it, because this, this episode's already too long. Yep. But uh, the next time that we do JMS as Spider-Man, we will get into the conversation, mm -hmm. we will talk about the guilt of, uh, of Uncle Ben, mm -hmm. and get into more fun villains that, is, that JMS creates for this run of Spider-Man. Right. Um, we'll also find out more about Spider-Man and Mary Jane's relationship, and how it will grow and develop and blossom into something that people will cherish, 
you know, 10 years after they dissolved it. Yeah. I would love it if the radiation still affected him somehow. Like, if this is where he got the other arms from. Or this is why, like, Mary Jane, like, gets cancer. No, that's terrible. Right. That's, that's disgusting <laughs> well, he got, and awful. He, he got the extra arms in, like, the late Yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah. But yeah. I was saying, like, if they did something like that. Something like, like that. Oh, Fine. yeah. I'm part spider and I'm part, like, the atom. But, mm -hmm. like... I just dosed myself with a huge yeah, amount of radiation. Yeah. To, like, there should be to consequences that. to yeah. that. Well, there are. Yeah. Well, there, yeah. You're not going to get it. Well, it's over. But there are consequences to this because Morlong comes back over and over. Over, over and over again. Incessantly, you might say. Yeah. Uh, in the other, himself. he just comes out. Like, he just shows up. No! Oh, no, no. I can't be beaten that easily. Yep. And then no, in, but like, I saw you dissolve. Ah, well, but did you? Here's the thing. <laughs> you can't really beat me until you grow unnecessary extra dumb powers. From the Spider God. Yeah. yeah. Then in Spider-Verse, uh, it turns out that the reason why he can like degenerate like that and why he keeps coming back, because clones. No. That's why he lived that long. What? Is Morlun clones? Oh, Morlun has only been clones. He's only ever no. been clones. No. Yeah. Clones? <laughs> yeah. Of course. It's all clones. That sucks. Yeah. The only thing that's like more... I'm sorry. That does make this a little bit better. Yeah. This is just he died. Yeah. This is just he's a cool, super hard to beat villain. Yeah. It's a crazy, crazy world. Topsy turvy world we live in. But here we are. Especially uh, for Spider-Man fans. Yeah. Especially for Spider-Man fans. JMS is Spider-Man. I'll put volume one in the description box below the video so you can pick up a copy because this is one of the best, I think... We've had context for Morlun. I know it gets worse. Right. But in a vacuum... But before all that... Yeah, this is pretty this, cool. And, it's and great. because Peter outright rejects Ezekiel's whole totemic yes. bullshit... Like, no. No, that's dumb. Let me prove it by using the radiation by defeating your dumb totem bad guy. Right. Like, fine. Cool. Checkmate. <laughs> also, Aunt May finds out he's Spider-Man and then actually gives Aunt May a purpose in the book and mm -hmm. a character to, to carry it. Yeah. It's incredible. Does uh, she blame herself at some point? She she blames herself for something essential to the Spider-Man mythos. It has nothing to do with Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll see you guys next time with another episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. So long.